It's actually sometimes called the forgotten pandemic. Maybe even some of you had never heard of this devastating outbreak. The reason it was forgotten, of course, was because it happened during one of the bloodiest wars in history. Uh, people were spurting blood from their ears and their noses. Descriptions of people turning blue um, or purple. So, you know, it was really, really severe and people just dropping down in the streets. A forgotten pandemic. But it was a huge global calamity. The number of deaths, we're saying 50 to 100 million. It is recorded by the Spanish press uh, and it becomes dubbed as the Spanish flu. Well, at the time in the 1920s, they estimated that maybe 20 million had died. Um, by the late 20th century, that figure had been up to 25 million. In the 21st century, with scientists and historians now getting together to work much more closely, that figure has now been up to 50 to 100 million people killed. Those that succumbed to the flu were in the age group 20 to 40 years, which is very unusual for an influenza epidemic or pandemic. And scientists and historians are now still looking to see why? There's really two ways that people died in 1918. They either died from the initial flu infection or they died from an enormously strong immune response to that virus where their lungs just filled up with fluids from trying to attack the virus that got into their lungs. You know, how did it spread so rapidly around the world? If you understand the origin of a pandemic, then you understand something about where it's come from and maybe you can stop that in future. Almost certainly it was a bird flu originally, but then we also know that that flu or something very similar to it was in pigs at the same time. How does the virus adapt from one species to another? How does, for example, a virus in pigs or in birds get into humans and then start transmitting? Then the key question is, how does the virus then adapt within that person to stop being a pig virus or a bird virus and become a human virus, in other words, to be able to transmit from human to human. Just as people were celebrating Armistice Day, and there was hope that it was dying down, but then it resurged and a far more deadly and virulent strain. What happened was is that virus continued to transmit among humans. In fact, it continued until 1957 to transmit between humans. And probably what happened there is that the virus adapted to humans. It wasn't this avian or swine virus that came in and was accidentally more pathogenic in humans. Scientists and public health officials are extremely concerned. The National Risk Register, which is the way that our government plans what are all the risks to civil society in the UK, there's only two events that are up there in terms of the most catastrophic, and that's a terrorist event or a influenza pandemic. There is a real threat that there can be such pandemics. There has been with the H7 viruses some transmission from human to human. Not very efficient and it hasn't really taken off. Um, if viruses did adapt to really transmit well between humans, there's a real concern that it could be as bad as the 1918 virus. Coming as a mathematician, it's happened a lot of times in the past. It'll probably happen again. It's Monday, March 11th, 1918, at a military training facility in Kansas, a mess cook woke up feeling like hell. He had a high fever, his throat was sore, and his body ached all over. The man went to see a nurse, and soon after, and that line would keep getting longer and longer, but more and more sick American soldiers at camps all over the country would head to battlefields of Europe all hell was about to break loose. This deadly flu traveled fast, and it's estimated that around 27% of the world's population of 1.8 to 1.9 billion people got infected. The estimates vary widely, but it's thought that the death toll of this flu was at least 50 million and maybe as much as 100 million. The virus seemed to kill more people who you could say should have had the strongest immune systems, those in the prime of their life, is that a similar flu pandemic had happened some decades earlier, but that flu wasn't quite as lethal. The survivors of that flu may have developed an immunity, and so when the Spanish flu came around, they dealt with it better. As for not getting the very young people, the theory is the flu had less effect on them. In Britain, 250,000 flu deaths were reported, and infected soldiers living in close quarters and often terrible conditions didn't help matters. The war was a world war, 
and it involved many countries, some with empires and many colonies. It's believed that there was a first wave of the flu, but the deadlier second wave spread so fast because of wartime troop movement. We now know that there's a condition known as cytokine explosion. This is basically an immune response from the body to help a person when he or she has been attacked by a virus, but there can be an overreaction, and when the body sends too many of the messenger proteins called cytokines, this can create an explosion. The downside to this is inflammation and that fluid buildup in the lungs might also be the reason that mostly people in their 20s to 40s died. In 1918, when mixing together and going back to their hometowns, when people showed early signs of the disease and moved it about in public, it was hard to test them. In Britain during the war, the chief medical officer of the local government board, Sir Arthur Newsholm, knew very well that a lockdown could help prevent further spread of the disease. But that was out of the question because of the war effort. Research shows he knew what was happening, but he encouraged the British to just carry on. At the end of 1918, the cases just kept dropping until it seemed the Spanish flu pandemic was almost over. One theory is that medical professionals became better at dealing with it. Other flu pandemics would come, but none as deadly. Brown has written extensively about influenza and argues that 2020 will not be another 1918. Oh my god. But for John Barry, there is a takeaway from then that still applies. The biggest lesson from the 1918 pandemic is clearly to tell the truth. What are the consequences if the truth isn't told? I think more people will die, yeah. Uh, clearly, that was the case in 1918. People can deal with the truth. It's the unknown that's much scarier.